Dumnonia is the Latinized name for the Brythonic kingdom in sub-Roman Britain between the late 4th and late 8th centuries. In what is now the more westerly parts of southwest England, it was centered in the area later called Devon, but included modern Cornwall and part of Somerset with its eastern boundary changing over time as the gradual westward expansion of the neighbouring Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of Wessex encroached on its territory. The spelling Damnonia is sometimes encountered, but is also used for the land of the Damnoni, later part of the Kingdom of Strathclyde, in what is today southern Scotland. Domnonia occurs as well, infrequently. Name the kingdom is named after the Dumnoni, a British Celtic tribe living in the southwest when the Romans arrived in Britain. According to Ptolemy's geography, variants of the name Dumnonia include Domnonia and Damnonia, the latter being used by Gildas in the 6th century as a pun on damnation to deprecate the area's contemporary ruler Constantine. The name has etymological origins in the proto-Celtic root word asterisk dubnor, meaning both deep and world. Groups with similar names existed in Scotland and Ireland. Later, the area became known to the English of neighbouring Wessex as the Kingdom of West Wales, and its inhabitants were also known to them as Deafness. In Welsh, and similarly in the southwestern Brythonic languages, it was Diefenine and this is the form which survives today in the name of the county of Devon. There is evidence, based on an entry in the Ravenna cosmography, that there may have been a sub-tribe in the western part of the territory known as the Cornovii from whose name the first element of the present day, name of Cornwall is probably derived, after a period of emigration in the 5th and 6th centuries from southwestern Britain to northern Armorica, a sister kingdom called Domnone was established on the continental North Atlantic coast in what became known as Brittany. Historian Barbara York has speculated that the Dumnoni may have seen the end of the Roman Empire as an opportunity to establish control in new areas. Extent. Before the arrival of the Romans, the Dumnoni seemed to have inhabited the southwest peninsula of Britain as far east as the River Parrot in Somerset and the River Axe in Dorset, judging by the coin distributions of the Dobuni and Juro Tridges. In the Roman period there was a provincial boundary between the area governed from Exeter and those governed from Dorchester and Ilchester. In the post-Roman period the eastern boundary of Dumnonia is unclear. The boundary may have been formed by the West Wands Dyke, Selwood Forest and Bokerley Dyke. Thus Dumnonia would have included later Cornwall, Devon, West Somerset and possibly parts of modern Dorset on the eastern border of the Jurotridges Kingdom. If so Dumnonia would have included places such as Glastonbury and South Cadbury. With the expansion of Wessex, the boundary was gradually pushed westward. See below. Culture and Industries the cultural connections of the pre-Roman Dumnoni, as expressed in their ceramics, are thought to have been with the peninsula of Almorica across the Channel, and with Wales and Ireland, rather than with the southeast of Britain. The people of Dumnoni would have spoken a Brythonic dialect, the ancestor of modern Cornish and Breton. Irish immigrants, the Deacute ISI, are evidenced by the inscribed stones they have left behind, sometimes written in Offham, sometimes in Latin, sometimes in both confirmed and supplemented by place name studies. Apart from fishing and agriculture, the main economic resource of the Dumnoni was tin mining, the tin having been exported since ancient times from the port of Ictish. Tin working continued throughout Roman occupation and appears to have reached a peak during the 3rd century AD. The area maintained trade links with Gaul and the Mediterranean after the Roman withdrawal, and it is likely that tin played an important part in this trade. Post-Roman imported pottery has been excavated from many sites across the region. An apparent surge in late 5th century Mediterranean imports is thought to be related to the trade in metals from Cornwall and Wales to the Byzantine Empire. 
Christianity seems to have survived in Dumnonia after the Roman departure from Britain, with a number of late Roman Christian cemeteries extending into the post-Roman period. In the 5th and 6th centuries the area was allegedly evangelized by the children of Brechan and saints from Ireland, like St. Purin, and Wales, like St. Petroc or St. Keen. There were important monasteries at Bodmin and Glastonbury, and also Exeter where 5th century burials discovered near the cathedral probably represent the cemetery of the foundation attended by St. Boniface. Sporadically, Cornish bishops are named in various records until they submitted to the See of Canterbury in the mid-9th century. Parish organization was a later development of fully Normanized times. Settlements Around AD 55, the Romans established a legionary fortress at Iscadumnaniorum, modern Exeter, but west of Exeter the area remained largely unromanized. Most of Dumnonia is notable for its lack of a villa system, though there were substantial numbers south of Bath and around Ilchester, and for its many settlements that have survived from the Romano-British period. As in other Brythonic areas, Iron Age hill fits, such as Hembury and Cadbury Castle, were refortified in post-Roman times for the use of chieftains or kings and other high-status settlements such as Tintagel seem to have been reconstructed during the period. Local archaeology has revealed that the isolated enclosed farmsteads known locally as rounds seem to have survived the Roman departure from Britain, but they were subsequently replaced in the 6th and 7th centuries, by unenclosed farms taking the Brythonic toponymic tray. Exeter, called Caia Uisc in Brythonic, was later the site of an important Saxon minister, but was still partially inhabited by Dumnonian Britons until the 10th century when Athelstan expelled them. By the mid-9th century, the royal seat may have been relocated further west during the West Saxon advance, to Lyseroit. Cornish earls in the 10th century were said to have moved to Loswithiel after Liskerd was seized. It has been suggested that the rulers of Dumnonia were itinerant, stopping at various royal residences, such as Tintagel and Cadbury Castle, at different times of the year, and possibly simultaneously holding lands in Brittany across the Channel. There is textual and archaeological evidence that districts such as Trigg were used as marshalling points for war hosts from across the region. History and Rulers Although subjugated by about AD 78, the local population could have retained strong local control, and Dumnonia may have been self-governed under Roman rule. Geoffrey of Monmouth stated that the ruler of Dumnonia, perhaps about the period c. 290 c. 305, was Caradacus. If not an entirely legendary figure, Caradacus would not have been a king in the true sense but may have held a powerful office within the Roman administration. The post-Roman history of Dumnonia comes from a variety of sources and is considered exceedingly difficult to interpret given that historical fact. Legend and confused pseudo-history are compounded by a variety of sources in Middle Welsh and Latin. The main sources available for discussion of this period include Gildas's De Exidio Britanniae and Nennius's Historia Britannum, the Annal Cambria, Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, William of Malmesbury's Gesta Regum Anglorum and De Antiquitate Glastoniensis Ecclesia, along with texts from the Black Book of Carmarthen and the Red Book of Hergist and Bede's Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum as well as The Descent of the Men of the North and the Book of Baglin. Conflict with the Saxons in 577 See Orlin of Wessex's victory at the Battle of Diorum caused the Britons of Dumnonia to be cut off by land from their Welsh allies. But since sea travel was not difficult this may not have been a severe loss. Clemen is thought to have been king when the Britons fought the Battle of Bindon in 614. This is most likely to have been at Bindon near Axmouth in Devon. Bampton, Oxfordshire has also been proposed as the site, but the claim lacks evidence.
The Flora's Historiarum, attributed incorrectly to Matthew of Westminster, states that the Britons were still in possession of Exeter in 632, when it was bravely defended against Pender of Mercia until relieved by Cadwallon, who engaged and defeated the Mercians with great slaughter to their troops. However, this is based on Geoffrey of Monmouth's pseudo-history. Around 652 Sen War of Wessex made a breakthrough against the Dumnonian defensive lines at the Battle of Bradford upon Avon. The West Saxon victory at the Battle of Pianum, around 658, resulted in the Saxons capturing, as far as the Parrot, and the eastern part of Dumnonia being permanently annexed by Wessex. Ethelwood's Anglo-Saxon Chronicles for 661 describes Senwar of Wessex fighting a battle at Posen to Spur, though it appears from the context that this is a battle against Wolf here of Mercia, if Posen to Spur is identified with Posbury, near Crediton. Devon, then some conflict with the Britons can be postulated. In Willibald's life of St. Boniface the head of Examchester Monastery, which can be identified with Exeter, Devon, has a Germanic name during the time Boniface studied there. Boniface self-identifies as Anglo-Saxon by birth and therefore Exeter may have been under West Saxon control at this time, that is, the late 7th century. At this time Dumnonia was sufficiently part of the known world for Old Helm, later Bishop of Sherborne, to address a letter around 705, to its King Geraint regarding the date of Easter. In 682 Wessex forces advanced as far as the sea, but it is unclear where this was. In 705 a bishopric was set up in Sherborne for the Saxon area west of Selwood. In 710 Geraint was defeated in battle by King Ine of Wessex, but in 722 the Annal Cambria claim a victory by the British in Cornwall at Heheel. By about 755, the territory of the Deafness was coming under significant pressure from the Saxon army. The campaigns of Egbert of Wessex in Devon between 813 and 822 probably signalled the conquest of Insula Dumnonia leaving a rump state in what is today called Cornwall, known at the time as Cernu, Cerny, or Kerno, and to the Anglo-Saxons as Cornwall or West Wales. In 825 a battle was fought between the Welsh, presumably those of Dumnonia, and the Anglo-Saxons. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle states, We fought the Wheelus and the Deafness at Gaffelforda. However, there is no mention of who won or who lost. A further rebellion in 838, when the West Welsh were supported by Danish forces, was crushed by Egbert at Hingston Down. The Cornish Bishop of Bodmin acknowledged the authority of Canterbury in 870 and the last known Cornish king, Don Yarth, died in 875. By the 880s Wessex had gained control of at least part of Cornwall, where Alfred the Great had estates. In about 936, according to William of Malmesbury writing around 1120, Athelstan evicted the Britons from Exeter and the rest of Devon, and set the east bank of the River Tamer as Cornwall's border. Although the chronology of Wessex expansion into all of Dumnonia is unclear, Devon had long been absorbed into England by the reign of Edward the Confessor. The early 12th century jester Herawardy gives the King of Cornwall just before the Norman conquest as a man named Alif. A caddick of Cornwall is said to have been deposed by William the Conqueror, bringing to a close the last vestiges of the Dumnonian kings in Britain. Although he first appears in the writings of 15th century antiquarian William of Worcester, Dumnonian continuity in Cornwall and Brittany Two waves of migrations took place to Armorica from Dumnonia. Some histories propose the theory that this may have resulted in rulers who exercised kingship in both Brittany and Dumnonia, explaining those occurrences of the same names of rulers in both territories. There are also numerous correspondences of insular Celtic saints and place names and a close linguistic relationship between Cornish and Breton. However the Breton regions of Kern of Cornawa and Domnone have well-established histories including entirely separate rulers from Dumnonia in 
Britain. While Cornwall retained its language and culture, Devons had significantly diminished by the arrival of the Saxon invaders in the 7th century, almost entirely due to the large-scale migration of Britons from Greater Dumnonia to Armorica at the end of the Roman occupation. J.B. Gover wrote in 1931 that by the middle of the 7th century Devon was a sparsely settled Celtic kingdom due to large-scale emigration to Armorica, a century and more earlier, and that once the resistance of its kings had been broken down no considerable native population remained to complicate the life of the new settlers. The relationship between the new Saxon overlords and the remaining indigenous Britons appears to have been peaceable and many Celtic place names survive in the county, although not to the extent of that of the neighbouring sub-tribe, the Cornovii who became modern-day Cornwall, the pre-medieval region of Cornaui in the Brittany region of the Armorican Peninsula is assumed to owe its name to descendants originating in insular Cornwall. The territories of the ancient Cornaui region coincide mostly with the southern part of the French département of the Finisterre, and some of its territorial lands are included in the départements of Côte d'Armor in Morbihan. At least part of the original territory associated with the pre-medieval Breton Kingdom of Domnoni coincides with the modern French département of the Côte d'Armor. Legendary Arthurian Connections in the 12th century Geoffrey of Monmouth wrote in his fanciful and imaginative Historia Regum Britanniae that King Arthur was conceived at Tintagel Castle, and he also claimed that Constantine, identified with the Constantine denounced by Gildas was a successor to Arthur, thereby making Arthur a member of the royal house of Dumnonia. Erben of Dumnonia and his son, Geraint, appear in the Arthurian tale of Geraint and Enid as ruling, on the far side of Severn. There is debate about the location of Arthur's supposed great victory at the Battle of Mount Baden, where the Britons fought off Anglo-Saxons. Most historians believe this battle, if it was historical, was fought outside the territory, at Bath, for instance. Geoffrey of Monmouth claimed that Arthur's final battle of Camelon was fought in Cornwall. Tradition points to Slaughter Bridge near Camelford which itself has been claimed, without foundation, to be the location of Camelot.